All right. Good morning, everyone. We are here again at Verma, this time at the Marriott Homes and Villas booth. We're here with Nitin and Ed, who are responsible for a lot of the really cool things with AI that Marriott is doing. So welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. Appreciate it. How are you guys uh, feeling about the VRMA experience so far? Pretty good? Quiet? Busy? What's what's the vibe over here at the Homes and Villas uh, booth? It's been pretty busy. we got good booth placement this year. It's nice to see everybody. I feel like it's a uh, like a family reunion every time we come to this. So it's really nice to catch up with some familiar faces and meet some new people. I love that you guys are at the entrance. Makes it really easy. <laughs> yeah, that is like prime boost spot. You have to like send the runner first thing to like make sure they get that. Now, I think it's really interesting. Uh, we learned from some of your teammates that you guys actually had the AI before the parent company of Marriott. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about how that came to be. Well, absolutely. I think not just before the parent company of Marriott, but the war cry we had at that time was that we want to go out before anybody in the format that we were trying to introduce it to. So what's unique about what we did is that we launched AI in search uh, because we believe in the principle of that let's meet the guests where they are and not bring them to where they want, where we want them to be. And so that led us to not doing it in a chat format and rather doing it in a search format. And the experience of building it first was sort of the war cry, which was just making us go, 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 because it, nothing like this had been done um, in, in the travel space that we know of. Everything was based out of two boxes. Where do you want to go and when do you want to go? And we thought it'd be so cool if people can just state their mind, what do they want? Hey, I just want to go someplace warm, blah, blah, blah. And that was a very different paradigm and a very exciting problem to have. So the way Homes and Villas is structured is that we are very fast, actually, uh, also because of how we are structured and our size and stuff like that. So in the, in the larger organization, it's a little harder to move things around. But we operate like a startup uh, in terms of how we work. And so that really gives us a huge advantage to think of new ideas and put them out in record time. Yeah, I think that is really fun because, you know, one of the advantages I think that short term rentals have is that we can be adaptable and agile and all of that. And we kind of say like our hotel brethren are a little bit slower to adapt and you get the best of both worlds. You have kind of like the might of a big brand, but you get to be agile like a startup. And so since you have kind of piloted this, and I'm so glad you didn't just release another chatbot, like I'm so over it. I think things can be way more interesting than that. So as you have, you know, rolled this program out, what are some of the interesting things or maybe surprising things that you guys have come across? We started with a chatbot. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. <laughs> that, but that's the thing, right? The, the technology is moving so fast. Uh, the use cases or how people interact with the technology is evolving. Like nobody really knew. This is almost a year ago that we started. Nobody really knew how everything was going to evolve. Really, ChatGPT was the the publicly accepted first experience that most people had. So that was the first thing we worked on. What could we do with chat? And we ex we explored itinerary planning, very similar to what other products are in the marketplace. And very quickly we discovered that the chat paradigm, A, it didn't solve our problem. And that to the work right about being first, the other one was really making sure that we didn't create a solution looking for a problem, but we actually started with what our guests were looking for. Um, and the idea that the chatbot didn't solve that problem, force us to look at it a different way and go back again and say, maybe asking you the question, you know, what do you want to do? And then helping you get an answer to that question while looking for a home was really unique and interesting. And that's how we ended up chasing and moving away from the chatbot in the first place, which I thought was a really interesting pivot, which again, when you talk about startup culture and how we operate, like that ability to pivot and move in a different direction was a big part of what yeah. our culture was. I um I love that because I love the idea of being like I just want like a six bedroom home somewhere warm close to these bars blah 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 and it might just bring you to some place you never would have thought of and I think that's really interesting for our industry too because you have you know maybe some operators that struggle to get people at certain times of year and like not particular peak season so just like someone randomly you know after a couple of glasses of wine being like I need to go here or where's the new destination for the bachelorette party? And I think it's really cool. You might actually really impact some operators in a way that they wouldn't have expected. Well, can I ask you guys a question? Because I was at the STR Skift Summit in New York, and I got to hear Jennifer speak on stage. And one of the things was curated collections. And so how much of the AI feature has 
push into curated collections is that data and search history that has shown you what the travelers are wanting so you go out and built a, a curated collection of them or what's the is there any collection uh, tied to the two I, products i can i can tie it um, i can tie both these things together for you from the guest perspective here uh, so the first answer is yes when people come to you and they can talk in sentences yeah then you learn a lot more than just name of the destination right and so all of that helps us learn about what is it that people think when they are trying to go somewhere, which was a very unanswered question. And only entities like Google had those answers because of how Google searches were being done. But to your points on collections, I actually don't see them as different products because if I was to sum up all of this, all of this deals with discovery. Where do I as, as a guest want to go, right? And the way I think about uh, the synergy between the two products of um, a search with AI or a search through collections is the mm -hmm. following. Collections are preset collections that are built by our team thinking of what does the guest want yeah. and then we put it into play. Generative AI search is in the same lingo equal to a feature called create your own collection. Yeah. And so how, what does that mean? So for example, if you go to a collection saying uh, best infinity pools in the world, right? So our team will put in homes which will exactly have that. But let's say we have not thought of a theme and we haven't created that. You can actually go to Generative AI and you can say, well, best pools in the world which also allow pets and which also have this and which also have that. What you've done with that search query, it, the prompt itself, is you have created a collection of your own and that is unique to what you need. So in my mind, both are the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's very well said. I'm like over here taking notes in my head. I'm like, I got to remember this. This is some good stuff. I know. And I think that's really, I mean, what a beautiful way to collect real information about your guests because that, I mean, data is like, is power. Like how, what are your clients actually searching for? And you can get so granular with that. And I mean, we're all giving away our data anyways. I'd rather give away all of my information to find the perfect vacation home. So I think that is fantastic. Can I add something to that? So we actually don't give our data away at all. And the when we think about what is data, what's the best use for data, it's generally the word personalization comes to your mind, right? So what do we want to do is we want to anticipate what somebody needs and we want to be able to give it to them without them asking for it and stuff like that. But what we are finding with the new AI paradigm is that travel is very complex in terms of how personalization should happen. I, for example, individually, if I talk about myself, if I look at the history of all the trips I've taken this year, you will not believe if I were to give you the raw data that this is the same person. You will think these were five different people with five different requirements. When I travel with my family, I want to get a different kind of hotel or a home. When I travel alone for a conference, I want to do different things and different. So what we are finding that uh, in terms of personalization, what generative AI has given us the ability to do is to make the prompt the king of personalization. So if we can understand in that very moment, who are you and what do you want, then it's almost like the historical layer doesn't add a lot of more, lot more value than what this intent itself is. So the, the way to sum it up is that I, I think intent is the new, trip intent is the new king for personalization. And that's what we are finding so different than how we have approached this problem. So with trip personalization, I want to ask you both this question. So feel free to answer on whoever wants to go first. But trip personalization, like you just said, it can look in the form of five different people you have in one, right? Like when you're with your family, by yourself, work trip, personal trip, golf trip, whatever, all looks different. Before generative AI, we would just have to type in one word, golf course, big home, pool, like little things that go into it. I want to know in the sense of the AI aspect, outside of, I, I, I've, I've seen this with ChatGPT, and I'm trying to get to a point of like, I've seen ChatGPT get confused when I've prompted it too much, when I've started to do this. So is there, on the generative AI search side, if there's too many prompts given in by one user because maybe they're trying to plan one or multiple trips, does AI still keep up? Does it predict the next trip or that this is the same person? Like, I, does this make sense? 
I'm trying to, okay. yeah, yeah, cool, cool. So I think that the Let's thing that's sure important that to recognize is each implementation is different. When you're talking purely about ChatGPT and you're asking for it to provide an itinerary and you start to build up context, which is the history of other prompts that you've entered, it's using that data to give you more refined answers, but at the end of the day, it's a math problem yeah. underneath, right? Um, our implementation doesn't retain that historical context from search to search, meaning each time you reprompt, you get a pure result, like that initial prompt and the results that our search tool interprets from that gives you that result. That could be different depending on where you are and in different use cases. If you are talking about how the data is utilized to provide a result for you, it's, I guess it's important to recognize that the context of your search will matter less with us and what you want to acknowledge and understand is each unique presentation of your intent gives you a unique set of results. And that is, again, it's a teaching thing yeah. because your experience with ChatGPT might be this persistent context. Yeah. And with us, it's like one and done. And you have to utilize how to operate in each of those. I'm using so many, uh, mm -hmm. so many like technology words here, but you have to, you have to figure out which one of those you're using as a user, and we have to teach you that. And that was part of the learning journey for us in making this thing, is that what is the right way to use a new technology that not a lot of people are familiar with to provide them a familiar result? And that's why ours, going back to the pivot, is you give us your intent, we give you a home. Mm -hmm. You give us your intent, we different intent, we give you a different set of homes. And at the end of the day, that's super exciting and interesting for us, back to the personalization piece, because now no longer am I trying to interpret your intent based on your historical behavior. You are now telling me in a much less, um, maybe psychologically scary way, because you're not giving away your data. Yes, I thank you for that correction also. Yeah. No, but that's I, okay, because yeah. like that is re that's how I feel, right? Yeah. Like, that's how anybody feels, and you're like, oh man, I've already given up all of this personal information about myself, go ahead, tell me what I want to know. <laughs> but what actually matters here is, you're telling me, much like I'd have a conversation with you in person if I was your travel agent, what do yeah. you want to do? Yeah. And I can now give you a really good result based on the data that I have in the system that we agreed upon. Yeah. There's nothing creepy about it. Yeah. It's really cool. Can I add one thing to it? So when we decided to get out of the chatbot and go into search, all of the context gets rewired in how the technology was built and how we wanted to use it. When you talk about continuity of prompts, that's a very chat GPT behavior or that's a very chat behavior because you are conversational with the technology at that point. What we did is we broke the paradigm of conversational and we went to a search paradigm. Now, when you think of us implementing it with search, then you have to think of us more Google, less ChatGPT in a way. And more Google, because what do you do when you enter something in Google and you don't see it? You edit the, the prompt. You don't converse with the yeah. result, right? So I think the medium of implementation uh, dictates a lot in what the uh, back and forth is going to look like. So final question, I guess, for the operators in the room, I think this is perfect for the traveler, right? Like this is, for me, I'm personally going to use this. I know my friends are going to use this. I know the millions, hundreds of millions of the Bonvoy members are using it, right? And actually using points on this. But for the operators in this room, we are VRMA right now. And obviously I'm sure everyone's trying to figure out how do they give a better experience for their guests? And it always usually probably starts with search. So what advice or tips do you guys have in the sense of any of the operators listening that want to provide this better experience. I want to be with a company or list with a company at least that is changing and innovating before everybody else and is actually creating the next wave of, of excitement and hospitality. What would I you guys- First and you'll do your closing, closing <laughs> words. <laughs> Let's do it. Your data, it's super easy. We were sitting with a meeting with a, an operator yesterday and um, we actually tried a couple of searches while we were in the meeting talking about like, oh, we hadn't thought about asking for this specific type of property, right? And it was, uh, we're in, uh, Arizona, it was homes with like indigenous art. That's not a thing that we had tested in our, um, you know, in the building of the product. So we wanted to run that in real time. And it worked because the operator had put the work in to build the product details and description to include things like that. And it can be, con it c the more data, the better. It can be a list of things that the house may contain. It could be 
uh, pros, like, hey, this is a really good story about this home. But what the search tool and the new tools allow you to do is to take any of that data, no matter how it's formatted, and begin to give you results. And that's the most important thing in operating, not just in our world, but really in any world, like yeah. great descriptions, great titles, making sure that you have the unique attributes of the data or of the home really listed, because you know what? You might not have a filter for indigenous art in any of the major platforms, but if you do have that search capability, now I know that I can find something with, you know, beautiful, you know, turquoise architecture and, you know, beautiful indigenous art laid out around the house. And if that's really what I'm looking for, and you've told me that, now I can give that result and match the home to the guest. And that's what we're all trying to do. I love it. And the thing I'll add to that is, uh, I agree with everything Ed said, and, and that was a good fresh example he and I had in mind because we were talking to some operators here yesterday. The way we have, the way operators have thought of building content around their property has been very property centric. But what we are finding, what the new technology can do, is that they have to broaden their horizon of things that are outside of the realm of the property itself. For example, if I, if I just say, I want to go hiking somewhere or I want to go scuba diving somewhere, you're not going to scuba dive in the property, right? Yeah. So now you are thinking of elements where your property is still a relevant place for me to stay if I were to do things that are outside of the purview of the property, but in the purview of the location itself. In the past, none of the keywords mattered that much because the only keyword the, the guest could put was the name of the destination. But now what we are saying is the guest can come in and put any keyword. So you, 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 you will start seeing behavior more and more similar to how people have thought of uh, search engine optimization uh, in terms of Google. But now AI will have its own search engine optimization in terms of how you would think and put. So it's a little bit complex, I know, but uh, you, you are to think of search not just as destination names, but, but as vectors or keywords that you're using to, to say a larger story of why your house is relevant to all the other things. So I think a final question for the two of you, what is your next uh, query? What property are you searching for? Oh, that's not fair. <laughs> you see how he punted? Yeah, he was like, I need a second to think. I cheat because I always use my wife's examples that selfishly going back to the beginning, like I built a tool for myself. This is literally something I sat down with my wife and I'd be like, where do you want to go? I have two weeks off and she would usually just give me the list. Yeah. Now I type the list into the prompt. So in most cases for me, it is, I want to stay near a theme park, have access to um, a national park. Cause that's like, you got to find those, scratch both those itches. Yeah. I like somewhere warm and I like somewhere where there's a lot of, you know, activities, yeah. hiking, um, even like jet skis, boating, that kind of thing. That's usually what my prompts are these days. Cause I have two little kids. I got to keep everybody entertained. Awesome. So for, for me, the, these are things like the first raw thought that comes to your mind when you're planning a trip. So now I'm in, in, in the winter trip planning mode in my mind. And so the things uh, are similar to what I was talking about. When my wife and I talk about it, the first thing we say is, oh, it's going to be cold. We want to go someplace warm. And then if we have a ge geography sort of uh, that we want to limit our search with, in the past, we had to go, so let's say you want to go to the Caribbean somewhere, right? In the past, we would go to every Caribbean island and put them in the destination box one by one, one by one to figure out what is what, right? Now we can just do anything. I, I can just say, hey, I want to go someplace warm on the East Coast or East Coast and Caribbean or whatever else I want. And in a single result, it pulls in the best places from everywhere, but then you can be specific also. You can say, hey, I'm going with my boys, with my family. They love water parks or they love uh, close, being close to the beach, or they love this and that and whatever else. So uh, to Ed's earlier point, no longer do things that you want have to be in preset 20 filters on the site. Your brain is the ultimate sort of game changer now. Whatever you can think of, we will show you the results for it. I I'll love give that. you my one favorite example, because we look at the prompts as they come in. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> I want to stay somewhere with great clam chowder. Wow. That's it. And we can give you houses, wow. right? Like we can give you homes where you can experience that. Yeah. Not one I would pick, but yeah. 
<laughs> That's the kind of thing that you can do now. You tell me your intent. You want to have a great day out, eat some clam chowder, maybe go walk in the woods. Yeah. We got you. Uh, just go a really good food. bowl of clam chowder. Yeah. Yes. So funny. Well, thank you guys so much for coming and talking to us. It's been a real pleasure. You guys built something truly incredible, and hopefully we can talk to you again soon. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you so much. Wonderful. Appreciate it.